Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, the question I'm about to answer, I, I think the it's it's pretty obvious, actually, the answer. So I'm going to wind up turning the video into something a little bit different uh, to talk about a genre that I think is really underrepresented in comics and has a potential to do more. And I think there's sales proof uh, that, that basically, you know, makes the case. But let's uh, let's read this mail and uh, we'll get the initial question out of the way. It says, um, "Could Kirby have drawn Star Trek?" Okay, yes. In fact, I, I think, uh, you know, forget Star Trek, Star Wars, if you think it Kirby and kind of the, the more fantastical elements of some of what he did with New Gods and Silver Surfer and kind of the, the cosmic side of the world that he did, um, I would have loved to have seen Jack Kirby do Star Trek or Star Wars or, um, you know, an original kind of sci-fi IP that, that was uh, big and, and far-ranging. Uh, imagine like, uh, or, you know, something that was kind of underrepresented. Imagine Jack Kirby's Battlestar Galactia. I mean, I, I don't know. I think there's there's quite a bit there. So the mail goes, hi, when you get back to the live streams, I was thinking that you might have some fun with fantasy writer artist assignments. I agree. That was, uh, that would be fun. For myself, I've always thought that if Jack Kirby was tasked to draw a Star Trek comic and he's hooked up with a science fiction author like James Bilsch or Norman Spinred, the results would have been, at the very least, interesting. <laughs> they would have been amazing, is what they would have been. Anyway, also, if Gene Colan had been set up with Marv Wolfman to do an adaptation of Dante's Inferno, I think it would have been a great book. That would have been that would have been incredibly uh, incredible as well. I, I always wish that um, you know uh, Mignola had done more kind of um, a Dante's Inferno. His his Dracula was just so good that he did way back in the day for tops. And I would have liked to have seen him do more of the kind of the Gothic horror type stuff, but let's, let's stick with science fiction because I think that science fiction in general in comics, I mean, let alone the, uh, the fantasy pairing of, you know, a Jack Kirby on kind of a, a big sci-fi comic would have been pretty cool. I mean, that, that would have generated some of the most amazing, especially again, if you would have tied him to a really powerful writer who was um, willing to work with Kirby's style to let Kirby just kind of explore whatever he wanted and then create a narrative around it of a, a bigger thing. I mean, in many ways, I think a really good pairing uh, would have been Jonathan Hickman with Jack Kirby. Obviously, the years don't align, but that that potentially could have been pretty crazy. The result, at least, would have been just hugely, hugely epic or so confusing and convoluted, like nobody would have gotten it, but they all would have agreed the art looked pretty. So <laughs> I think one of those two, but I would have loved to see it. Um, I think sci-fi in general, which is where I'm going to kind of take the video, is an area that is really underrepresented in comics. And I feel like it's probably uh, something that's, that's coming up. There's been a lot of speculation about what's the next big genre that's going to hit after the superhero movie. And uh, it, you know, lots of people have their different opinions and uh, a lot of stupid opinions. I, I was reading some, I don't know, it, not Gizmodo, but it was one of the uh, one of the, the dumb sites. Uh, and they, they were going on about how, you know, clearly the next big genre to hit movies that's been underrepresented is slice of life rom-coms in movies. And I'm, I'm reading that going, there's, there's tons of those now. Tons. Like what? What does underrepresented mean? Good God! You mean everything? People are absurd with uh, how they view stuff. By the way, I mean, including I mean, popular people too. What in this Tarantino interview that he came out where he said he doesn't consider the actors who are in superhero movies real actors, or I'm paraphrasing, but something along those lines. Um, I, I you know, there's all this. The people who agreed with him are like, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, the, the glut of superhero movies. There's nothing in the theaters but superhero movies. Nothing? Really? I mean, there's there's rarely more than one going on at a time. We are living in a time where Black Adam and uh, Black Panther are in the theater at the same time, sort of by accident, because Black Adam's got delayed, you know, so long. There's not a lot going out in the theater, but... It, you, if you go to a movie theater, first of all, movie theaters generally have more than one screen. You know, they generally have more than four screens. And there, there's, most of the time, there is no superhero movie playing. And if there is, it's one screen out of eight or 12. You, you have options, is my point. If you, if you despise super, it's not a big defense of Marvel and, and the MCU or anything like that. It's like, don't bitch about things that are easily avoided. 
If you do not like superhero movies, don't worry. 95% or more of the movies being produced are not superhero movies. You'll be fine. Unless your argument is the only movies you are completely helpless with what you watch. You can only watch the things that are uh, that make that make the most money. That's it. You can, that you're, you're helpless. The thing that's making the most money, that's what you have to watch. You can avoid superhero movies really easy. Barely an inconvenience. It's it's no problem. Uh, but anyway, rom-com, rom-com slice of life movies. Fuck me. Sorry. I mean, some of those movies are fine. I've enjoyed some of those movies because, you know, when you produce 500,000 of them, I'm, I'm willing to bet if you actually count it up, there's no, there's, there's more rom-com kind of slice of life films being produced than superhero movies in a given year by a lot. I'd say it's more than triple that amount. Um, those movies are far cheaper, far easier to produce. Anyway, that it's, it's ridiculous. And there one out right now where, what George Clooney and, and, um, I, the, the woman with the big mouth, it was a prostitute a long time ago, pretty woman. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's all I can remember. Her, her, um, the one that was a prostitute, the prostitute with a heart of gold that won over Richard Gere. I can remember his, his name, but I can't remember hers. Misogyny on the Perch channel, clearly. I'm drawing a blank. I keep uh, keep wanting to go Jennifer Aniston. It's definitely not. Uh, Julia Roberts. There we go. Thank you. All the people screaming at the show. I uh, finally got through. Anyway, that movie's in the theater right now. Anyway, I think the next big uh, genre that's going to hit will be sci-fi. Now, obviously, we have also seen sci-fi movies, and there's sci-fi movies that are being produced all the time. But I think that there's a world where you can uh, you can really dig into that. And I think that in, in many ways, if Star Wars hadn't just you know, screwed itself, uh, we would have seen this sci-fi kind of wave hit. And and imagine how good that would have been for Disney. You would have had a really strong MCU superhero and really strong sci-fi wave going on in theaters at the same time with them owning both the properties. That would have been good for them, but uh, instead it went a different direction. But I, I think with sci-fi, there's a couple things that need to happen. I think one, a couple series, more than just one, a few series need to come out that are not trying to be necessarily social commentary or clever or think too highly of itself. They need to take almost the MCU approach the begin- to sci-fi, meaning you could just you could show up. The movie doesn't require a lot of kind of in-depth uh, thought. It uh, it's relatively straightforward. What's going on? There's it's introducing some characters, some settings. I mean, if you think about it. Yes, and people always like to point out that, well, Star Trek used to have a lot of kind of moral, you know, implication episodes. It did, but not every episode, and generally they were like spoon-fed to you. You know, a lot of people have put greater meaning into Star Trek and into Star Wars in the years that have followed. But if you look at those original movies, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, the original trilogy, trilogy they were summer blockbuster-style movies. Was there a deeper lesson in there? I mean, <clears throat> sure, they got super popular, and then people assigned deeper meaning to them. But it wasn't uh, it wasn't always that way. And and now a lot of sci-fi movies come out, and it's almost like there's an insecurity. Like, they have to prove that they're thought-provoking sci-fi, that they've got more depth than, uh, you know, than, than just a, a dumb kind of action film. But we need a couple franchises out there that kind of steer into just dumb action film. I mean, it's, I think it's telling that uh, the Orville is popular right now in the sense that it, it I mean, it, it's a knockoff Star Trek. It has some moral things in it as well. It has some lessons and that whole, uh, you know, Worf character that, that is gay is kind of wacky and <laughs> they went all in on that at one point in season two. But, but regardless, uh, it, I think sci-fi is, the, is just waiting to take off. So I, I'm curious if you guys think the same. What what are the what are you the listeners think? Do you think that's the next big one? I, I think we're going to have ten to twenty years that will ignite as soon as you get one to two kind of franchises starting up uh, that are you know basically you know copy the MCU formula without trying to skip to MCU phase three or phase four to go to phase one where you're just cranking out easy to absorb, simple to understand action films with, you know, characters that, you know, everything else. I'm not saying this is a giant lover of the MCU. I'm just saying that formula of simplicity works. It's the exact reason why if you look at MCU phase four and what they're doing right now, 
it's struggling because they're they're pretty far away from that formula. You take a film like Thor or Captain America, the first Avenger or Iron Man one or two, you know, none of which I think you'd say are like the most amazing films in the history of cinema. But if you look at those and structure and kind of how they were built and how they were put out and you compare it to the Eternals uh, or hell, even, uh, you know, the Shang, Shang Chi, um, there's a big difference in that Marvel's kind of fallen into its own trap where it's trying to say, no, 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 we, we, we do clever films. I think the, uh, the just do something simple. Anyway, I think sci-fi is pretty cool, but I'll bring us back to the beginning. Yeah. Jack Kirby, a fantasy booking, Jack Kirby on a Star Trek comic, Star Wars comic, some kind of sci-fi comic would have been a Star Trek would have been better than Star Wars. I think his style would have just been incredible. Imagine the kind of the imagination that could have come out on those pages. I'm, I'm, I'm all in for that. That's a cool thought for the day. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.